Hello and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are introducing the brand new Mom Plus Me and its coordinating dies. This set is so cute with those critters hugging, so let's go ahead and check it out. First we have my favorite image from the set, and that is this cute little owl hugging its baby. And then we have a fox holding its baby too. We have an individual large owl and an individual large fox, and then of course a little baby owl and a baby fox too. We have this great little tree for setting the scene. And then some fun pieces of grass, also perfect for creating the scene. And some flowers too, which are just so beautiful. I love stamping those all around a grassy background. And we have three sizes in those flowers. We have this great large heart and a little mini heart. I love this heart shape so much. A butterfly. And then this great tree stump, which has three little sentiments that fit inside that heart. So we have mom plus me, of course. Then we have me plus you, and we have I heart you, which makes this stump usable for so many different types of cards. So here you'll see I'm gonna stamp the I heart you right in that stump and it looks so cute. We have this gorgeous mom and grandma font that are just so beautiful. And then all these sentiments that go along with the mom and grandma. So we have I'll always love you, you're so clever, I look up to you, you give the best hugs, thank you for sharing your wisdom, you're a hoot. I love you. Happy Mother's Day, of course. And then we have best ever. So you can see how you can layer them with the mom or the grandma. So I'm just going to stamp that out real quick with the best and then mom ever, which I think is such a cute thing for a Mother's Day card. And then we have a tiny little exclamation point to go along with all of these phrases. Next, I'm using my Copic markers to add some color to these adorable little critters. And you can see there where I'm adding all of the shading. I put my medium down and now I'm blending that out with my light one. And then I can move on to my darker marker. So I'm adding even more darker areas under where there would be shadows, like under the wing and under the cute little baby owl. And so that's gonna really give the image some nice pop. I'm coloring his little face there, and I'm going to use similar markers to color the little baby owl, but I'm sticking to lighter colors. That way the baby owl will kind of pop up off the mama owl. Now I have put it a little bit too dark there on the eyes, so I just brought in a lighter marker and went over it, and it really lightened up the area. And there on the left, you can see I colored another owl in the same way. And I'm going to use the same markers to color the larger individual owl here. And you can see now I'm just doing the same thing. I'm blending out with my lighter marker. And then I'm going to take that darkest marker and go in the areas where I want the most shading, like under the wings and under his beak. And then I can blend those out. And you can see as I blend those out, it really makes the wings pop and look three-dimensional. And then here are my favorite colors for beaks. And now I'm gonna work on the little baby owl. I'm gonna make him a lot lighter. I thought it'd be fun to play with some different markers and just make him look a little bit different. So I'm just blending that out and now he's a little light colored owl, which I think is adorable. Next for the stump, it's a solid stamped image, but I wanted to give it a little bit more life. So I'm coloring in all those open veins there on the tree stump with my markers and just blending it a little bit like that, putting dark on the top and the bottom and it really makes the stump come to life. Now I'm going to be using the same method with just different markers for the fox. I love these colors to make kind of a reddish fox look. I'm continuing to blend out these colors and now I started looking at it and realizing that I didn't want the baby fox to blend in too much. So I'm going to introduce a new color. So I'm going to take E35 and just make the fox just the baby fox look just a little bit different from the other fox and then I'm adding more darkness around the baby fox to make the baby really pop out from the mama fox. I love these colors for just a little bit of interest on the white areas of the fox. And now I'm just going to be using the same exact technique with all of these other foxes. Now the reason I like to leave areas white is when I'm blending things out, I don't want to layer too much of the marker. I don't want it to get too dark. So by leaving the area white to the edge there, you can see I get almost a lighter look right at the tip of the tail. Now I'm going to go in and color their little ears and their faces too. Now I can move on to the little baby fox doing the same exact method, laying down my light, then my dark, then blending it out with my light. 
Now that all of my images are colored, it's time to die cut. So I'm going to pull apart these dies by bending them at the wire tabs and also using my wire snips to remove the pieces and also clean up any of those little metal edges at the ends of my dies. Now that I've done that, it's ready to start lining the dies up with the images. So I'm going to take that die right there, use some post-it note tape, which is super low tack tape, to line up that die and then hold it in place with the tape. I'm going to put all the dies down that I can and then run it through my die cut machine. And here you'll see that it's die cut and a perfect image. I just love this so much. Now he's all perfect and done right there. Now here are all of the images from the set and I just love this little tree stump and how you can add the critters to it. I just think it looks so cute to add them on there. Uh, it just makes such a perfect little scene. And then you can also add just the one fox on top or put the baby at the bottom to kind of show the baby looking up to the mom. So I just love all these little images so let's go ahead and start making a card with them. I'm going to be stamping out some of these solid images in some colors. So the grass is going to be in freshly cut grass of course. Then I'll be stamping out some of the flowers in some plastic flamingo ink. I just love this bright pink. And then I'll be stamping the butterflies in fresh lavender. And I'm stamping a bunch of images. I'm going to go ahead and die cut them all so that I can use them for lots of cards now and in the future too. So here I've got a bunch of my little die cut images and now it's time to find some pattern paper. So I'm looking in the new Let's Polka in the Meadow collection here and I've got the Dewdrop Line Dance and now the Wildflower Polka Dot. I'm going to cut this piece to four by five and a quarter, and my polka dotted piece will be five and a quarter by an inch and a quarter. Now I'm going to cut a standard size craft card base, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. And so I can go ahead and score there at four and a quarter, fold it, increase it well with my bone folder, and now I can line up these pieces that I've cut out of my pattern paper on top. And I love that little craft border around them. Now that I've got my base done, I can start working on all the extra pieces. So this was cut with our brand new Everyday Sentiment Banners die. And I'm going to stamp the mom and you give the best hugs onto this banner. And then my whole card is kind of going to be based off this banner being the anchor for all of the images. So the tree stump is going to go right on top of that banner. And now I can add my cute little baby and mama owl and these fun grass and flower images to kind of help set the scene. And my last finishing touch is to add this cute little purple butterfly. And so here you can see how cute this card is. I think it would make any mom's day on Mother's Day. Now that my card is all done, I thought it would be fun to create a coordinating gift bag. So I'm taking some Dewdrop Line Dance paper in the 12 by 12, and I'm going to cut that to 5 and 3 quarters wide, and then die cut it with the brand new tote bag die. I'm going to fold along the crease lines that the die has made for me and then make sure to use my bone folder so that those lines are nice and crisp. So I'll fold along these four different lines just like this and then once again crease them with my bone folder to make sure that there's a nice crisp edge. And now I can repeat the same thing with the other piece. Now that I've done that, I'm ready to start creating the bag. So I'm going to lay down some score tape here, which is some super sticky tape that's going to hold this bag together really well, all along that bottom rectangle base piece of the bag. I'm going to peel up that liner tape and line up these two pieces. And I like to do that by kind of creating that corner and then shoving the other piece in the corner. It makes them line up every single time. And now that this part is done, I'm going to stop here because it's time to decorate. This bag is three and a half inches wide, so I'm going to cut this piece three and a half inches by three quarters inches, and this piece is three and a half inches by one and five eighths. Now that these pieces are all cut, I can start to stamp my sentiment on the white panel, and I'm going to use the same exact sentiment as the card so that they coordinate together. And now I can lay that pink polka dotted piece on there and my sentiment panel on there too. And then I'm going to add the pieces in exactly the same way as I did the other cards. So the owl and the flowers and the grass. And of course, I've got to add that little butterfly to it too. Now that the bag is all decorated, it's time to actually form the bag. So I've put adhesive on all of those four tabs. And we're going to line those tabs up with the edge of the bag. And as we line those up, we're going to press along the inside to make sure that there's a nice adhesion between the tabs and the interior part of the bag. And then I'm going to push in right on those sides and form the bag. And it's just 
so cute. I absolutely love how it turned out. And I love that you can take the same design as a card and translate it to the tote bag. So it's a really cute, nice ensemble. You could put a little gift card or a little jewelry from your mom in there. And I think anybody would just love this. It's just so cute. Now we don't want grandma to be left out on Mother's Day, so I'm gonna make this card for my Abuela Mimi, and I have taken a three and a half inch stitched square and cut some mermaid and noble fur cardstock. Now I'm gonna take the new simple stitched hillside borders and kind of line up my sentiment there so I know how tall to make that hill. I can run it through my die cut machine and now I have a nice stitched hillside. I'm gonna use the puffy cloud border dies to also create some clouds for the top of this fun little scene and you'll see how cute this is already looking. Now I wanna stamp my sentiment, so I'm gonna use some Versamark ink and stamp onto my Noble Fur Hill here. I'm going to use that sticky ink to help me hold on some white heat embossing powder, and then I can heat it up with my heat tool and get this gorgeous, shiny, white heat embossed image. I'm gonna start layering all of my pieces onto my card here, so I've got my hills and my fun little clouds. And what I really want to do is create kind of a shadow box look, and I'm going to use that with the new stitch square frames. So I've cut a piece of guava cardstock, and I really want it to look like a shadow box. So I'm adding some foam tape to the back of this great stitched frame, which really helps kind of finalize the card. And then I've cut out a little heart stamped with plastic flamingo ink, and I'm going to use some thin 3D foam squares to adhere down my fox, and then a normal foam square for the heart. Now I'm going to create a seven inch by three and a half inch piece here so that I can create a three and a half inch square card base. I'll score it three and a half inches, fold that and crease that really well. And now I have a card base ready for this sweet little mini square card. I'm gonna add some Wink of Stella clear glitter pen to the heart. And here you can see that fun glitter and happiness that it adds. And now my cute little shadow box card is all done and I hope my Mimi really loves it. Now here's a look at all three cards. I love the idea of taking a card design and translating it to a tote bag. I'm really going to try to do this more often and I would love to see if you guys try it out too. So this is Mom Plus Me and it's coordinating dies. I love this set so much. It's just so sweet. And I love that you could take some of the Fox and Owl images and use them for other types of cards too. They don't necessarily always have to be mom and grandma cards. But I think it's always nice to show your mom and grandma that you're thinking of them. So I cannot wait to see what you guys create with this set, and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.